Um, I'm here with uh, Ken Munro at Looks Live, who works for Pentest Partners, and he's an ethical hacker. I wonder if you could begin by telling us a little bit about what an ethical hacker is. So we're the good guys. So our job is to go and test companies with their permission at their request. Um, we then find the vulnerabilities that hackers might exploit. We then can show our clients how they can fix them. They fix it, and then the bad guys can't do it. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. But it, you, were, you were just talking before, and it's an exceptionally easy process to, to hack into a lot of these IoT products. I mean, more yeah. simple than you would expect. So conventional businesses, much harder to hack into. So again, we have firewalls, we have security personnel. And actually, the easiest way to get into a business is usually through the people now, whether it's through a phishing scam email or telephone scam or just having a chat with them. IoT is another matter altogether, and for me it's like turning the clock back to when I first started in security. It's like turning the clock back 10, 15 years, because we find security flaws that are really easy to exploit, really simple to get in, and have, in some cases, some really terrifying consequences. Yeah. Can you tell us a little, little bit about those consequences, because they can be quite scary. Well, there's all sorts, lots of, so lots of ways. Some of the first things we found were simple things like stealing someone's Wi-Fi network key. So if I've got your network key, I can see everything you're doing on your home network. Yeah, the lot, passwords, banking, social networks. But that just affects you, so it's not so serious. What we started to see more recently are um, these sort of attacks. So this is a, um, a CCTV camera, and it connects up to a, a digital video recorder I've got in my bag. And these devices, unfortunately, weren't very well secured. And that led to a worm called Mirai yeah. taking control of these digital video recorders and then turning them into what's called a botnet. And that's a great big massive computing pair that then starts making requests of certain websites. And in this case, the DVRs were requesting and trying to overload the DNS service by a company called DIN. And because so many big organizations use DIN for their DNS provisions, that's turning web addresses into IP addresses, it knocked over vast quantities of the internet. So people lost access to social networks one Friday afternoon in the US. I lost it's access huge. to my Twitter. It's huge. It's yeah, terrible. It's <laughs> yeah, but, but this is becoming more and more common. Every, like every other kind of month when you look on the BBC website, there's, there's another hack and another hack, and they seem to be getting bigger all the time. So I think what we're seeing there is actually, it's not really a difference in scale. What we're seeing is that the press is getting access to these stories. And I think you know, we've been investigating cybercrime for donkey's years. And yes, there is an uptake, but it's not quite as much as you might perceive. But we've got a big game changer coming, and that's the EU General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. And what that's going to change in the EU and the UK is that if an organization is hacked or loses customer data, they have to disclose it. And that's the reason why we know about all the hacks in the US, because if a US system loses data, we hear about it. And we're going to see that coming to the UK. So I think in two years' time, if you think it's busy in cyber security in the press now, it's going to get horrific. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you wander around a lot of the stands here and you ask people here and you say, well, what's going to be the big issue? What's going to be the, 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 the new big thing in the lighting industry? Most people will say IoT. And does that worry you because this thing is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and more companies are making IoT products that are not necessarily secure, so there's going to be more and more insecure. We're opening Pandora's box, yeah. just like the cameras that I showed you. That's one vulnerability in one particular type of device. We started to see huge quantities of devices, light bulbs, controllers, hubs that connect them to our mobile phones. All of these things can have vulnerabilities in, and I don't think it'll be too long before we start to see another big story about IoT lighting, another big story about IoT X, Y, and Z. And then we'll, we're really turning the internet against us. Yeah. yeah. So just in, 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 um, in kind of respect to the lighting industry, is that, would you say that's a more, um, has more problems than, the, than other industries, or is, is the? I think there are a few enlightened vendors out there, but by and large, I think lighting vendors need to wake up and realize that what they're doing could be very insecure. You have to look at the security in the round. There's great guidance out there you can follow for free. Make sure, frankly, you're the next vendor that I'm demonstrating a vulnerability in on stage. So what, uh, just, to, just to kind of finish off, what are the kind of top three things that you need to do to, to create a, a secure product? Okay, number one, by far and away, is the mobile application. So that's the app that everyone uses to control your thing. Make sure it's written securely. And there's some good guidance from OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project. It's at owasp.org. And that tells you how to write secure mobile apps. So it's fine. The next big issue we find is um, typically around RF, so the radio frequency, whether it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z-Wave, or any of the other protocols. 
not being implemented securely. We find that vendors have bought a chip that does security, but forgot to do the security. We find that all the time. And the last one is, don't forget that when you're making an IT product, you're selling it to consumers and to hackers. And so the interested hacker will take apart your device, look at your chipset, and try and extract the firmware, the software that runs on the chips. And if that's not written securely, they can take control of it all over again. So three simple things. Write your mobile apps well, sort out your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your RF, and make sure that your firmware is well written, it's digitally signed, and you check that signature. Yeah. Okay, Ken Morrell, thank you very much.